Um, the most common question I get asked on uh, through private private messages and things like that is just like how to use the builds. Like I, I, you can easily like click the builds, but uh, most people are confused as to to what to actually do. So I'm gonna quickly. This is just gonna be a guide quickly on what you need to be doing with the build. So um, I've just quickly gone through. It's fairly obvious with like the burst builds. Don't don't worry about them yet. Like if you're a beginner, you want to be using a DPS build. I mean, like unless you're playing in a in a, an actual team, then you want to use a control build. And I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to do a t DPS build. This is introduction to PvP to get you in there, getting get winning games and stuff like that. Um, feel that you have an impact on the game. Uh, there's there's two things that I want to say first, and that is. When you start, you don't want to be running completely optimal builds because the optim like the the little optimizations of sometimes weapons, sometimes traits mean it's harder to survive if you don't know what you're doing. But when you do know what you're doing, you're getting rid of redundant survivability and putting it all into damage. So there are like much easier builds than you can that you can run than the one I'm about to show you now. But this one will, when you start learning, and it won't even take that long. It will take like maybe 10 hours, maybe 20 hours of game time just to, to be really, really good with the build. So I'm just going to click the one that people have been asking about the most, which is the two-handed DPS. Okay, so I'm just going to assume you've never played before or you've only played a small amount. Um, so it's, it's a hammer staff build. And I'm thinking... We might just run great because great sword is fairly simple to know exactly what you're doing. You're like you're spinning here, you're doing damage here. You got to you know you're auto attacking. The the hammer, the damage comes more from control and um, when you land mighty blow, constantly. Um, like whirling wrath is so easy to dodge; it pretty much doesn't do any damage. But against lower level players, it actually does. It also has like ring of warding. It has a lot of control. So we're gonna go go with staff and great sword instead of, instead of the hammer. But normally we would be running hammer. We're just gonna be just so you can get into PvP. We're gonna be running with a great sword. So first thing I'm gonna go get. Yeah, again I'm just gonna assume you've never played. So we'll actually just we we'll played very little. We will just go get the items from the the armorsmiths and stuff. All right. So we'll go. You'll just get your items and then you'll go to the it's vitality and then you get six soldiers and then put your soldiers runes on your items so i've actually got scholars on so i'll just get and put it on my items okay so soldiers makes it so your shouts remove an extra condition and it gives you a lot of HP and toughness. So they're, they're really, really strong. Okay, then we're gonna go to the Weaponsmith and then we'll buy our weapons, which will be a great sword and a staff. And then we'll get uh, two on crit sigils of superior fire. So I already have sigils. Uh, staff. Got the new, just go, this new. Stuff. I, I don't know. Anyway, so fire and fire. Okay, so we got our soldiers, our fire, and we got a great sword and a staff. A okay, then we're gonna go Zerka Zerka for the amulet and um, jewel. So just double click that and get it. So now you, you've got all your items, everything set up. Now all you need to do is the traits. So. For traits, we're going to put, um, I don't know, I've got it here somewhere. 0, 05, 30, 35. And then we're going to put altruistic healing, um, retributive armor, and purity, and two handed mastery, superior area. Okay. Oh, and pure voice, of course. So then we get, grab shelter, three shouts, 
and renewed focus. Okay, so we've got everything now. So that's the build down. So we're just going to discuss what everything does. All right, so purity removes the condition once every 10 seconds. So for example, um, I, it saved my life so many times where I've gotten feared and it's just removed feared, fear instantly and it's just like now I'm not controlled and I can use skills again. Um, sometimes it just removes gigantic whoops, um, bleed stacks. Like you have a stack of bleeding and it just goes, nah, go on. You know, like if they don't cover conditions, you can just get them removed. Um, you know, when you're like 40 second poisons on, on class like Thief, not, not all thieves, but some thieves, you're just stuck with that poison for ages. Um, just walking around with poison with the Guardian, you're not. Like, as soon as you get out of combat, you don't have any conditions anymore because they get removed really quickly. I mean, you can use your shouts as well. Um, then you've got... Oh, the, the Aegis, don't worry about that, it's relevant. Uh, justice is blind. So every time you use uh, Virtue of Justice, you blind someone. That's really, really important. Um, to, to blind, like, you know, the hammer skills, you can see them when they leap up into the air and smash the ground, that's Earthshaker. Like, skills like that, you've got to blind. Um, that's irrelevant. Might when you block attacks, that, that's kind of relevant, but again, not that important. Um, when you start playing more, you'll realize when you can use shelter to gain, like, 18 stacks might, like, ridiculous amounts. Um, altruistic healing heals you for every um, boon you get. So using something like Save Yourselves will give you a ton of healing. Not a ton, but a, a lot of a decent amount of healing. And things like Empower will heal you every second for as many allies in, in range. Um, hold the line and stand your ground will also give you... Like every time you give out a boon, same with your virtues, you'll get a lot of health back. Not a lot, but it stacks up to be a lot. Retributive Armor. Um, toughness converted to Precision. That's You don't need to know about that. Uh, superior arrow reduces the cooldown on shouts. You have three shouts, so it's very important. Two-handed mastery reduces the cooldown on your two-handed weapons, which again is really important. You have two two-handed weapons. And pure voice uh, conditions converted into boons. So I'm not 100% sure if they fixed the bugs with it, because before you would almost always get vigor for just no reason. You'd just always get vigor. But now I think they've fixed it a bit, so you won't always get the vigor. Um, but it's still really, really important, like getting the the regen um, is, is really important and um, boons for your virtues so whenever you use a virtue you get um, it actually says on there now so um, virtue just gives you might you get regen from resolve and courage gives you um, protection so don't don't like ever forget how re really strong like courage is because five and a half seconds of protection is more than the shield gives you um, Okay, so we've just gone through our skills, so it's pretty simple. We'll just go to the DPS Trials Waypoint, and... Um, I don't... Like, the one big thing that people talk about a lot is, is rotations. I, I don't like to use that word because it's sort of... What newer people think by rotations is sort of like... Well, first you use Empower, then you switch, and then you use Whirling, and then the Leap of Faith, and then... Binding Blade and then pull them back and you know, you know like they think there's like a set way to play the build what you actually have to do is you have sort of like combinations of skills and when they do something to you you react with a combination so they will leave themselves open for something or something like that like on my burst builds um, when they open up a certain skill for example against a warrior when they when they try and earth shake you you blind and then you have an opportunity to put up stability or a block or another blind to prevent their next control skill and then you get a free burst off. They can't do anything about it. Like Things like that, that where you have to use skills um, to give you an opportunity. You don't have the perfect rotation or combination every single time. So you've got to learn to use skills together but not all of them as a rotation because if you fall into that mindset you will lose a crap ton because you, you just won't be using them in the right situation. But let's just say, like, you know, you, you're in an even fight, you're not being pressured that much, then there is, you know, you can do your full rotations, things like that. If you're just going into a fight, you can. So, um, there's a few things to remember when you, you're playing. Um, firstly, I advise you always to start on your star. So that means whenever you go between fights, things like that, you want to be on your staff. Two two reasons: um, the swiftness, and when you when you start a fight, 
you want to be on your weapon that will you want to be swapping to the weapon that does the damage that's generally how it works so you start off with does the most damage sort of how it works so you, like things like you can put up in power and as soon as in power goes down you swap and then you're whirling on the enemy things that that's just an example of what you can do um uh, where am I going with this? Yeah, so you want to start on your staff when you fight anything, um, and you want to actually DPS in your staff. Your staff is actually a pretty decent DPS weapon. You put down um, your symbol in power, you got 12 stacks of might, you're hitting AoE, and you're actually hitting a decent amount, especially with your fire procs. And then when you switch to your um, sword, the first thing you want to do is you want to look for a whirling, because it does have a short recharge. And you do want to land it. The only negative is it's, it's very easily kited. So if you think they're going to kite, then binding blade first, pull them to you, and then whirling. And then you can chuck in things like um, save yourselves will give you fury, and that will increase your damage quite significantly. And uh, things like just after you hit them, you can um, you can like leap a faith to them to. Uh, for that last hit, so if they're trying to run away, you can leap a faith to them. And so if you want to use the full combo, if you... I'll, I'll just wait till this recharges the cooldown on the, this weapon swap. If you want to use the full combo for, for like, if you're fine and everything's okay and no one's pressuring you or anything like that, you want to use Empower, and then you want to swap, then you want to put down your symbol, pull everyone to you, Whirling Wrath, and you want to put down Virtue of Justice first as well and save yourselves for all the crit. So we'll just do that now. I obviously they teleported back, but that's what you want to do. And then you want to Binding Blade if they're low, and you can kill them with that. Okay, so that's basic things. Um, the reason I don't use the Greatsword is because the control and survivability on the hammer and the damage on the hammer is just better than the Greatsword. Just always better. Which means when you're playing against good players, it's always better to be on have a hammer instead of the great sword, um, because yeah, it's just everything is just better. Like the control, the the survivability, the damage, because you always land everything. Well, not always, but you land way more damage than you do on the great sword. Okay, so I'll go into some hot joins. This is just eight v eight. This is like what you're going to be doing. You just join an eight v eight hot join. You're not pressured by your team at all. Turn off all chat. Don't even listen to it. So I'm going to... Um, hold on. I'll move my overlay for a sec. Okay, overlay off. There we go. Sorry, it's not on my solid state drive anymore, so it loads really slow. Okay. So I joined red team. Doesn't matter what team you join. Even if you're losing, doesn't even matter. Alright, so turn off all chat. It doesn't matter what it is. I, I, you can put on anything. Um, I'll put on PMs only. I'll put my overlay back on. Just to, don't listen to anybody in all chat. You can have the team one. Or, even no, not even the team one. Screw that. No all chat. All right. So, using the left button, you can move around. This move the screen around. Excuse me. Um and look for people trying to gank you and things like that. That's what I usually do the most. And um, you can hotkey something to look behind you. I don't know the default hotkey, I've changed it. Okay, so when you use the staff uh, two, when it goes through the person, it does a lot of damage and its explosion doesn't do as much damage. So you wanna make sure that goes through them and then detonate it um, for the most amount of damage. Okay, so sword is really um, inaccurate for burst as well because you can just kite it by moving <laughs> unfortunately so by putting a lot of DPS on him we're going to just pressure him down he's obviously wearing uh, soldiers you tuck down in power get close to him get the pull off to save our ally and then whirl him right now we're getting a lot of conditions so we're going to put down our, um, uh, our condition removals dodge out of it and then what we do here is we sort of go in and out so we we don't want to stay in the fight that's pointless like staying in there is a good easy way to get killed we want to like move in and move out 
And Empower is really... Sorry, Empower. Line of Warding is really good against melee type players. Because they um, obviously can't get to you. So here I'm getting ganked, there's not much I can do, I'll probably die. See, if, if I have the sword, uh, the, the, the uh, hammer here, I can pressure him a lot more because most of my attacks, it's just the auto attacks on the, the greatsword that are the likely to hit. Yours. Okay, so I can't really do much, all I'm do, right, doing right now is just kiting him until I get into a situation where I have cooldowns and where I can deal with him. Random dodging is fine here because all he's doing is auto attacking. Okay, so now here, he has to come into melee range to fight me. If he doesn't, then I'm fine. If he does, then I'm prepared for him. So I'm going to go around back. Let me heal up. There's nothing I can do here. Again, so see, I haven't committed to anything here. I'm just going around the edges. I don't need to commit. If I commit, then I can die, I can get a kill. But I don't need to. And that, that's another thing that everybody's got to learn when you're starting a new class. Right. So again, I'm just going around to the back because I can see it's decapped. Um, and I can see there's a fight here. I don't need to... <laughs> you have to shift click and sh to, to draw on the map and shift is my dodge. So if I, if I do stupid dodges while I'm trying to say things, yeah, that's why. So see how there's a the big fight here? That's not going to get me points. It, not like me personally, my team points, which I need to win. So firstly I cap here, then I go help there. If they die in the process, I don't even care. This is hot joint. They've, they've screwed up themselves. I'm not going to mess up too. Okay, so this boss, never initiate a boss fight on the other side of the team. And never initiate one on your side, unless you know you can 100% get it. Otherwise you are going to screw up. Um, always dodge illusion attacks because they, they do a crap ton of damage regardless of what illusion they are. And go for low targets. See how this guy's low? So now we're just going to press. Learn the timing of attacks. That's, that's the one attack that I don't really know the timing of. I mistimed that quite badly. And there's nothing I can do to save. Oh, actually. It looks like that. There is. Now I just want to keep my protection up, keep the condies off me so I can res him, shelter it up. Again, that was for the blocks, not for the heal. Make it so they can't pressure me very easily, and then go back in. So we got the kill. I would blind him to guarantee that stomp, but unfortunately I don't have blind up. So I'm pulling him in. <laughs> Should have clicked him first, because I checked the stability, but I didn't. So again, fight battles you know you can win. Um, things that give you maneuverability, like the greatsword, that you have to manually target it. Manually target them. Don't, don't just like, because the greatsword leap, you have to, um, they took the hedge. you have to be facing, you, you, you leap the way you're facing or to your target. So just manually target things if you want to run away, things like that. Okay, so I'm planning to pull him on his heel, like that. What was the spell? I thought it was this heal. That was bad. Okay, again, I'm getting nuked now, so I'm gonna chuck up protection and get out of the way. The condies are gonna come up, and then I'm gonna... Uh, that spell immobilizes. So as soon as I got immobilized, I cancelled it straight away. I'm gonna heal up. And remember, every boon you give, you gain HP. Now... That's a bad fight. Okay, so they may go for Svania here, and if they do go for Svania, I'll just take it off them, or try and take it off them, pressure them. Okay, so again, I'm just going to pressure him by pulling him in, he loses his dodge abilities. There we go. So always just fight um, fights you know you can win, you won't, you won't even die. Um, pick targets as well, because as players can see the targets, like it, it doesn't matter how bad they are, they'll know to, to attack your target. Even if you don't know what you're doing, they will. Oops, stood in the wrong spot. You 
You can also run uh, Runes of Lissa with this build. Those are okay. Um, soldiers are just better, but... That was a fail. So we switch targets. And just make sure you're just dodging abilities. Um, even if the abilities don't do that much to begin with, it's better than not dodging. And it's better than random dodging. So be aware, like how, like about this far, it will give them the empower buff. So we're gonna wait a couple of seconds till that stability goes down, and then we're gonna pull him. So we'll pull him now, and then we we'll, might get a kill out of this with our ally. There we go. And then he's gonna try and interrupt the stomp. We got the block up. Free storm. Fortunately, our ally got stomped at the same time. The keep is yours. Again, don't pick fights, you'll lose. Even though we're going to win this fight, they're going for me, I don't want to die. So don't, don't pick those kinds of fights. I'm standing in Binding Roots, which now stacks, unfortunately. Fortunately, we've lost the game already. There's nothing you can do about that, it's fine. Well, I'm articulating myself with this, and I'm gonna go to hammer now to show you the difference. So the big difference with hammer and greatsword is what it looks like you're doing. Like um, greatsword looks like you're doing a lot of damage when you hit. Like you see those three Ks and stuff, you're not actually hitting that much. And against good players, you're not hitting anything. They they'll just dodge every time. Um, let's get the hammer on. Fire. Join a random team. Um, you can also pick good players from the previous team and just try and join in on them. That's always a viable strategy. Okay, so I'm going to go to the middle first, but I'm going to check. Actually, going to outside. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so if there's too many people here, I'm not going to fight this. I will just lose. I mean, maybe I won't lose because then they might not be very good, but I'm not going to take the chance. Again, um, if you need to run away, try not to get in combat um, at the start. So, like, you see there, they had the they they took off my first Aegis. If if they would, and I dodged the other shots. If the, if I thought they were going to hit me again, I would have put Aegis back on. So I just get away quickly and I don't get snared because they do have cripple. Okay, so I, I can try and fight this guy. You can definitely 1v1. So dodge, always dodge phantasm attacks, remove confusion, it's important. Especially when bursting mercenaries. And put a target up on their head. So see how he jumped to the clone, but he'd already put the clone behind his so. Now I don't do as much in the auto attacks, but I always land mighty blow. It's harder to dodge, it's a waste of a dodge. But phantasm attacks. Dodge the teleports. As soon as that little symbol comes up there, the um, it means they've used it. You can hear the sounds as well. You've lost the quarry. And when you're stomping mesmers, just cancel halfway through and reinitiate the stomp, and you'll get them when they they finish their teleport. Okay, so see here, there's four guys coming into mid. Nothing I can do. There's n there's no chance of me winning here. I can try and save my ally, but that's it. He's not going to try and run away. He's going to try and stay on the point, which is a waste. It's not worth the points because we don't have it capped. If we had it capped, okay. So see now we see our allies coming in. Um, we could go back and try and help out, or what I'm going to do is just try and defend the side. Now here, this is where we can actually try and just um, hold out for as long as we can. We need our... We can't live here. I mean, unless they're really, 
really terrible. So all I'm doing is I'm chaining blocks, blinds, um, control skills, making sure I remember which one's the real Mesmer. Running off the point and around in circles, like if if because if I stand on the point there, I'm just gonna die anyway. So I want to deny the cap, but I don't want to, to to die really fast. And I want to die on the point, but I'm gonna die off it because I misdodged. I dodged forward and so backwards for some dumb reason. <laughs> Timing your knockback when you're down as well is really important in team fights, but here it doesn't matter. Anyway, so we lost this. That's okay because they should win middle, and they should win their far point. Um, but it's hot join, so we could be down in players. Yeah, <sighs> that sucks. But that's when it's okay to die. It's um, again, this is from a hot join point of view. In a tournament point of view, um, if I was if I was there by myself against two people, it's still okay to die because they will cap the other two points. It's just a default cap for us. That's easy win. Um, so I'm just going straight back. Keep him off the point as long as I can. Okay, so I'm going to knock him off, and then. Hopefully this gets in time. Yeah. And then now we start the fight. So make sure you're using combo fields as well. Like I, I'm giving myself constant retaliation through combo fields. And I'm just gonna keep him snared. Could. <laughs> and just off the point. The waterfall is yours. Now when you get hit by a staff, uh, symbol, mark, sorry, from a necromancer, it's very, very likely they're gonna spam more than one. So I want to get all the cooldowns out of that set. So dodging will actually dodge quite a few of them. Blinding them is also really good. So I dodged his fear there as soon as he went into death shroud. I pushed him off the point, decap the point, and I'm going to mistime this because I'm not used to it. That's the one skill that I, I mistime every time. You see how I'm pressuring him? Just with mighty blows, auto attacks. Stay behind them when they're immobilized. Can we get the stomp. I'm not gonna get the stomp. That's too late. Unfortunately, they just pulled everyone to mid. Like my teammate pulled everyone to mid. He was looking for someone to save him, but um, inadvertently. He loses the point and kills both of us. Again, you can't do anything about that. You just have to hope people try not be stupid. It's, you'll be hoping for a very long time. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can... Um, when, you, when you do that, you can look on side points and stuff. But you'll also miss key animations. So generally what happens is I just rely on my team to call out I don't play hot runs that much, but I, I generally rely on my team to call out when um, the waterfall is yours. when they're. Oh, I missed it. It's close. Yeah, thieves. Yeah, so when they when they're moving to, between points, when enemies are moving between points, my teammates will say, "There's one going mid." Blah blah blah. He can't actually beat me. This is pretty silly. Just default build win against him. He can annoy me with immobilize because this stupid new skill has immobilize on it. You he can't actually kill me. Just ignore him for now, unless he goes for all in. Yeah, thieves will spam regardless of what build they are. So. Um, it doesn't matter what thief build you're playing against, they're all going to be just spamming 1, 2, whatever skill they have. They'll be teleporting out constantly. You just got to land as much damage as you can, while you can. Now charge up skills on the Guardians are really, uh, not unique, but uh, not many other classes have it where you can charge up in one direction and complete the skill in the other direction. Yeah. 
see how weak he actually is. So if I do get some damage off on him, he just dies. We didn't have to pay attention to him at all. He just had to make one mistake where he got caught in um, Ring of Boarding and he's dead. There are different thief builds which will be much stronger against you, but he was one of those people who just want to spam um, in and out, so it doesn't do anything. Okay, so the one thing I haven't learnt yet is to look at the uh, the minimap for the enemy presence. So generally when warriors are playing uh, in the greatsword set, they're looking for an opportunity to burst you down. Not always, but they generally are. Um, they, they don't usually start, they usually start in longbow set. So this one here is really glassy. I'm going to deny the cap here. Now, the thing about the engineer, don't stand under them. See, I got the five stacks of confusion. That was because I got controlled in one of his bombs. You captured the quarry. So right now, all I'm doing is stopping him from holding the point. I'm going to lose the game anyway. Again, like, our team is just completely inferior to them. I'm just picking random teams. Um, but again, it's, it's about making you more effective, regardless of what team you're on. This is the last match I'm going to play. Uh, do, 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 team. Hold on to your point. This will be fun. Seize theirs. Now I'm going to show you a game where I play much more aggressive. So. Instead of just like uh, diving in to fights and things like that. Enemy captured the windmill. So now we, we check if they want to fight me or if they want to. Okay, they want to fight me. <laughs> That's where I should have Aegis and kept out of combat. Now, um, moving as well will change the direction your line of warding is going. Um, Pets are stupidly designed, by the way. So. Alrighty. I'll just go there. An enemy was destroyed. There's no point fighting this. There's four people. <laughs> okay, so... I was going to go just for their point, because generally what happens is you, you, you maneuver around the side. If they go for you, you just duke them around the midpoint and then you go for them. And then you go for their point. But, see what I mean? Like the bunkers following me. Like you can just pretty much walk around in circles and you can go for their points. Um, in hot join at least. In, in tournament play, you can just go directly for the points and you'll have a fairer fight. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to push him, see at that angle, push him off the point completely to get back. Maybe he's botting, I don't know. I thought I dodged forward Enemy there, but I didn't. Three seconds for the trebuchet. Yeah. Messed that up because he shot overshot, but Clock tower captured. you don't even have to look at the trebuchet to know when it's firing. So these are just basic TV P tips. Um, whoever's on it, I can take in a one v one. Be really careful here because they just need to tap the button and they can spam trebuchet shots and kill you very fast. 
So now this guy can't take me. Now, the thing is, if he was any, if he was half decent. He'd be able to take me easily, but he's not. Now what he just did is he just used his passive heal. He just wait, he's dead. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop this tribe real quick. I don't want that interfering with our gameplay. My skill just missed. If you get immobilized by a warrior, do not just break it straight away. Don't even worry about what it's from. Remember, escape and stow weapons will um, interrupt your skills, so you can not have the full recharge of like banish and things like that. Ooh, bad dodge. I'm gonna pull his condies. Uh, dodge the shatter. And all I wanna do right now is I just wanna get my ally to get as much AoE down as possible. So. Now we, we are targeting the engineer. Put down in power for him. So unfortunately, this guy's gonna be a pain in the ass. Now jumping up when you use skills like uh, Enemy repair. sorry, try and concentrate on not dying. When you use skills like banish, will give you a slightly better access, and um, will land on people. Like you could see there, um, it's going to land on him. It can go through walls as well if the people aren't in the way. <laughs> Then it can, yes. Now you can see it's rubber banding a bit, but uh, once you get used to where you generally rubber band, like you could see that I didn't fall off the edge, but I still fell off the edge. But then it reverted back to, to me not falling off the edge. But doing things like empower with quickness is just crazy good. Now what I'm trying to do now is I'm baiting in, in situations just like just then. You can bait the enemies into an unfavorable fight, even if it's unfavorable for you. So the thief and the warrior are on me. Um, I could probably take them because they're not very good. But what I'm trying to do there is trying to bait it so that we definitely can just free kill them. So that's still the target we want to do. Keep our confusion stacks down. These two characters together are going to put down a lot of confusion. I might actually talk over the trebuchet and get myself killed, by the way. So that's pretty, pretty awkward. Okay, so when there's three people, now you have to be really careful with what you do. So I'm just going to hold this point as long as possible. It's not going to be very long, because I don't have any cooldowns. No, 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 never mind. Okay, if I stayed there, I would have died. So, Clock Tower is one of the easiest points to dodge off. So, to, to, to kite people out, because you just get down the side and then you break the uh, line of sight. Enemy captured the windmill. Let me go back, Captain. Now, when you circle around the map, um, it does take more time to get somewhere, but you just shake off enemies that are trying to chase you. And if they decide to chase you around the map, you have more control than they do. You, you have the most control out of anything in the game, pretty much, so... You'll pretty much always be able to outfight them. Not in terms of a fight, but in terms of running away. Except if it's a thief. So if they precast nades like that, you will... Okay. So he's not actually going to go for the point. Just need to get swiftness up, and then I can do him. If he tries to stay on the point... Fine. I don't want to. Okay. The the most annoying thing about AI is they just they just have these random ass skill sets. 
so they'll just knock you down or they'll do something, you know, random fears that they cast previously already. That was meant for the thief. The enemy has their repair kit. When they cloak, you're pretty much guaranteed they're gonna go for you pretty early. The blocks will help out. Okay, so we can actually take this, strangely enough. It doesn't look like we can, but we can. Pull those condies. If he dies though, I can't resin. He's done. Yeah. Now it's time to bug out. Yeah, you just you just stay on the edge. The tankier character will, will be in the middle, and if you don't have a tank character, you rotate between people. Even with like uh, bunkers and stuff, you still rotate. So just be remember that um, rotations when you rotate on and off points is extremely important. Otherwise, you one person will take too much damage. Two people being at half health is better than one person being at full health and one person being dead. Oops. I didn't mean to click it in. So now we have the might stacks, he can't fight us again. He can dodge, do whatever, again, he can't fight. And, um, he probably can't fight that warrior either. Generally, I help out, um, people in hot joints in, in, in an autonomic game, they'll tell me if they can take on a certain person. Again, I'm going to go for the far point because they're going to be just stacking mid again. See how he's already gone there. Uh, if he chases me, it's not going to work out very well. Unless I miss that. So yeah, sometimes they just randomly hit even though they don't. Unfortunately, that's just what happens in the wars. Now he's really squishy, so... If he doesn't hop up. Okay, sometimes skills just miss for no reason. Unfortunately, that's just what happens in this game. The invulnerability frames are just wrecked up. So yeah, again, like I'm missing things like banish, which shouldn't be missed. You saw like I hit it at the end of his dodge. I even timed it perfectly, and it still didn't. Like... And that wasn't there. And... So I can't engage a fight. I don't know if the stream's lagging me or if it's just the game lagging. Sucks so much. He's so bad as well, he's missed almost every single nade. That's okay. Now I get an ally. And that's another tip. If you're lagging, if you're having trouble with anything, grab an ally, go kill shit. I can't do anything. Again, I don't understand. That's just not the path thing he was taking when I used the skill. Dodge the giant white ones, or you're screwed. And uh, like you saw before, sometimes I'd dodge it and it wouldn't actually do anything. Yeah, I'm gonna go help mid and make sure that stays capped. This, holding this will win the game. He won't make it, unless he dodge jumps or has sickness. Your team is victorious. And there you go. So, that's your basic, basic tutorial. Um, again, like you, you can have some influence over the game, you're just not going to have that much because of the... Oops, one thing. Because of the way it's set up, like... Uh, in 8v8s, you, you can't screw up your game, but 